<laughs> We're so sorry, Uncle Albert. We're so sorry if we caused you any pain. We're so sorry. What kind of shit is this? Uncle Albert. One and I think it's gonna rain. You know this is one of the most craziest comebacks. Um, and I'm not gonna be able to let two minutes pass, so let me just get into it right now because it's too sick. Either they're gonna demonetize it or they ain't. White woman, 87, blamed for the death of Emmett Till, says she's a victim in her newly leaked autobiography and claims she tried to stop her husband's lit mob from killing the team. Ain't that something? Ain't that something? Okay. Girl, girl, girl. The claims come from an unpublished work penned by Carolyn Bryant Dunham, whose assertions Teal cattailed her in Mississippi in 1955 saw him lynch. The slaying helped kickstart the civil rights movement in the U.S. with the case gaining prominence after the magazine published a photo of Teal's mangled corpse. Now 87, Dunham was just... 21 at the time of the murder, has since maintained her innocence. However, in a leaked 99-page manuscript, Dunham now insists that she's always felt like a victim as well as Emmett and has paid dearly with an altered life. But you got one. But you got a life. Whew. I did not wish any harm and could not stop harm from coming to him since I didn't know what was planned for him, she said in the unpublished piece. I have always prayed that God would bless Emmett's family. I am truly sorry for the pain his family was caused. Damn. Talking about gaslighting, denial. Oh, oh my God. You know what? She went on to moan that she paid dearly with an altered life. And after Teal 14 was killed by her husband, Roy Bryant, in Money, Mississippi, her life was altered. She said she was just 21 at the time and has maintained her innocence. Although last week a group of, of activists stormed a North Carolina senior facility um, in an attempt to arrest her after unearthing an arrest warrant, it later transpired that she didn't live there. I did not wish Emmett any harm and could not stop the harm from coming to him since I didn't know what was planned for him, she wrote in an unpublished piece. I am more than a wolf whistle. Wait, 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 wait. Why'd you even tell him in the first place then? If you didn't want no harm to come to Emmett, let's, let's reason together, you psychotic. Why in the hell would you even tell that lie on him then? Why? why? In the piece first reported by the Mississippi Center for Investigative Reporting, Dunham astonishingly claimed that it is at this point she tried to protect the boy, telling the two that they had picked the wrong man. He's not even a man, he's a boy. Picked up the wrong man. I tried to protect him by telling Roy that he's not the one, that's not him. Please take him home. Dunham went on to claim that she didn't want him killed. The case gained prominence after a magazine published in the photo of Teal's mangled corpse and mainstream media picked up the story. Teal, who was beaten and tied with barbed wire to a cotton gin fan, ugh, 
before being tossed by his two assailants into the Tallahatchie River, uh, was all, so disfigured that his mother could only identify it by an initial ring. He was visiting from Chicago at the time of the brutal killing, which helped galvanize the modern civil rights movement. The crime has become ingrained in the history of the U.S. with Dunham then-husband Roy Bryan and J.W. Milan acquitted of murder, although they later confessed to the crime in a magazine interview. You know, black people, you know, we have been through so much together. We've suffered so much trauma together. You would think, you would pray that that would be the catalyst for us to stick together. You know, but I guess the abuse on us has been so deadly that it's almost impossible to get out of a pain body. Everything we touch, we attribute pain to it and allow pain to radiate from ourselves. And, um, I mean, it's stories like this that let me know that not only did we have to look out for the white murderers, now we got to look out for black murderers. And it makes it so sad. You know? That's what makes it sad. Hello? I mean, that's what makes it just almost, um, it's really pitiful. I mean, it really is. That we've been constructed through so much pain. Ah. Uh, the work is signed Carolyn, but not report, but was reportedly transcribed by her daughter-in-law, Marsha Bryant. Historian and author Timothy Dyson of Durham said he obtained a copy of Dunham while interviewing her in 2008. Tyson had placed the manuscript in an archive at the University of North Carolina with the agreement that it not be made public for decades, though he said he gave it to the FBI during an investigation, the agency concluded that last year. He decided to make it public now following the recent discovery of an arrest warrant on the kidnapping charges that was issued for Dunham in 55 but never served. The potential for an investigation was more important than the archival agreements, mm -mm, though those are important things, Tyson said. But this is probably the last chance for an indictment in this case. A cousin of Teal, who leads the Emmett Teal Legacy Foundation, her name is Deborah Watts, said in the memoir that there is new evidence that shows Dunham involvement in the case and is particularly important when combined with the arrest warrant. I truly believe these developments cannot be ignored by the author and Mrs. authorities in Mississippi, she said. The memoir is remarkable, not only because it's the most extensive account of the secessional episode ever recorded by Dunham, but also because it contains contradictions that raise questions about her truthfulness through the years. And Dale Klinger, a retired FBI agent who investigated the taste test more, case more than 15 years ago, both of those liars. For instance, Dunham claims in the memoir to have yelled for help after being confronted by Teal inside the family store in Money, Mississippi. Yet no one ever reported hearing screams, Klinger said. Also, Dunham never previously mentioned that she and Roy Bryan chatted about the abduction. In the manuscript, she said they did. That seems so ludicrous. How would you have a major event in your life? and not even talk about it, right? I mean, come on. The Justice Department closed its most recent investigation to the case December, and in December, and Mississippi authorities haven't given any indication that they plan to pursue the kidnapping warrant or other charge, any other charges against Dunham. 
but the Teal family is pushing authorities to act. Keith Bochamp, a filmmaker whose documentary preceded the Justice Department's probe in the Klinger in a Killinger was in which Killinger was involved and that ended without charges in 2007, said in the memo I showed that Dunham is culpable in the kidnapping and murder of Emmett Lewis Teal and do not and to not hold her accountable for her action is an injustice to us all. Our fight is going to continue until justice is finally served, Joe Bochamp said. It was Bochamp, along with two of Teal's relatives, who discovered the arrest warrant with Dunham's name on it earlier this month in the basement of a Mississippi courthouse. Hmm. Ain't that something? The historian who provided the roughly 35,000 word manuscript to the AP Associated Press helped spur the government's most recent investigation to the killing by publishing a book in 2017 in which he quoted Dunham as saying that she lied when she claimed Timmy grabbed her and whistled and made sexual advances. In the memoir, however, she claims Till did do those things. And during the most recent investigation, Dunham told the FBI that she never recanted. Dunham, Tyson said Dunham's statement in the memoir exonerating herself of wrongdoing needs to be taken with a good-sized shovel of, full of salt, particularly in her claim that Teal identified himself to the men who took him from the family home and later admitted to killing him. Two big white men with guns came and dragged him out of his aunt and great uncle's house at 2 o'clock in the morning in, Missis in the Mississippi Delta in 1955. I do not believe for one minute that he identified himself. Neither Dunham nor any other relative has responded to messages and phone calls from the AP seeking comment. It was unclear whether Dunham currently lives or if she has an attorney. Yes, yeah, she lives. Uh, her last known address was in Raleigh, North Carolina. You know, um, it's amazing to me. You know, it's just amazing to me how all those Nazi soldiers, and it's not even a question that they should be looked at uh, held accountable for what they did to the Nazis in them camps. And I feel no different about Miss Dunham. She needs, she needs, she really needs to, um, yeah, she needs to be held accountable. It's just that simple. It's just that simple. Nothing else to say. I'll see you in the next video.